Have you ever been made to feel you are not good enough, not pretty enough, not smart enough, not enough? You were created with a specific purpose and with a specific design. Christian Women Television Network is created with you in mind. It is a place for Christian women to amplify their voice and level up their media exposure while making a massive impact on the world through your mission-driven calling. Welcome to your network, Christian Women Television Network, a legacy production. Welcome to Curbs, where we are creating unforgettable resources, value, and empowerment status for Christian women entrepreneurs. Now, here's our host, Dr. Faye. Well, welcome back, everyone, to this amazing Curves. It is our pleasure to continue to bring you the best of the best around the world, both men and women entrepreneurs who are making an impact and creating a mark upon this world that can never be erased. And my guest today is no exception to that rule. And I want this video to do the introduction for me. So, here you go. Let's roll it in. I love to introduce somebody really awesome. He is a master of training other speaker and <laughs> he is a great speaker because I saw him speaking and uh, he had a call. He looks like a like athlete. He looks like a fighter, but when he starts speaking, he speaks with a real warm heart and really touch people's heart and really fascinate people. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and square holes. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them or disagree with them, glorify or vilify them, but the one thing you cannot do is ignore them because they change things they push the human race forward and while some may see them as the crazy ones we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do reuben west communicates by connecting with his audience when he presents and when he's sharing a key message being able to connect and communicate your instructions clearly is a masterful skill. The ultimate professional. Reuben is a guy that not only teaches a message, but also demonstrates the message. He's helped me to craft my art, and I'm sure he'll help you to craft yours. Very accomplished international speaker being able to just connect to any audience no matter where they come from or what kind of people they are. He helps you and serves you in every kind of way to elevate you as a speaker and I highly recommend him. He is a people's heart connecting scientist with a using instrument of your voice and your appearance and your heart to touch people's heart. His communication is unmatched. I'm Australian, he's American, and it really makes no difference as to our culture and where we have come from because his message, the way he communicates it, is from humanity. Find a way to take the next step. Thank you. Welcome to Curves. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure being here. Oh, it is an absolutely de de delight that we've been able to connect and stay connected for a couple of years at least now. And I so appreciate the work that you're doing around the world. And I know that you have been a globe trotter. You have been uh, <laughs> interesting and, and sharing um, with people about business and life and 
you know, pouring into them, as we saw in the video just a moment ago. And I'm, I'm, every time I listen to it, I thought, man, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. <laughs> it is so powerful. So welcome, sir. Thank you so much. You know, uh, Dr. West, we have uh, a conversation that you and I've talked about and is, um, you know, women entrepreneurs and the global impact that they have on the economy. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's a surface conversation, but it goes so much deeper than just the economy. It's like the very soul and heart of our humanity to make sure that all that both genders are equally represented across all platforms. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about what your personal experience has been over the past couple of years as you've traveled and talk to us about some of the encounters you've had in different cultures. One of the things that's interesting, Dr. Faye, is that there is certain differences that we have as individuals or certain differences that we have being American and I go to Africa and I was just in Dubai and the, the Middle East. Uh, and so we can, it's easy to point out those differences, but I think what we miss is the ways that we're the same. And as I travel, there's so many ways that I'm like, wow, we do that too. Wow. We need that too. Wow. We think the same way too. Wow. We want the same thing for our family and for our children and our future generations too. And so the thing that has really inspired me is not all the differences that I saw, although they were amazing, but what inspired me was the way that we are the same, that we have the same wants, the same needs, the same desires, that, that we want the same connection. We want people to understand who we are and what we bring to the table. Being that the case, now you see that there is a, a, an avenue for international business. There's an avenue for women to connect with other women on other continents to provide products, goods, services, ideas, suggestions, know-how, knowledge, all of those things. Why? Because at the core, they're wanting the same way. They're wanting the same thing. They're wanting the same opportunities. I was just, um, if you look at the picture that's behind me, that was the International Business Connection Summit that I did in Nairobi, Kenya in November, July of this past year, of this year. July of this year. And um, all of these people are entrepreneurs that came that they said, hey, we want to connect our business with businesses around the world. We'd like to connect with people in the US and the people in Ghana and the people in uh, South Africa and the people in Egypt. They're people just like you and I, but they have an idea to connect what they do to people around the world. Now, if I don't know if you can see it or not, but there were plenty of women in that room. There were plenty of women in that room that came and said, hey, I have a business, yeah. I have a product, I yeah. have a service, I have an idea, and I'm looking to connect. So I think one of the things that really inspired me was that there's so much consistency when you go from country to country. All they're doing now is finding out how can we connect with other countries to get our products, services, ideas out there, and how can we connect with them to get what they have in here? Because some of them wanted to be a rep for other products and services that they don't have. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that is so important. I think that we can focus in on that just for a few minutes, because when we talk about the connections and the similarities that we have with other people around the world, we come back to the one God because we all that's what makes us all desire the same thing as mm -hmm. we delight in him he gives us the desires of our heart every mother wants to feed her child every father wants to a true father wants to take care of his family every. all want more and the want more inside of us is god who's in us who has already graced us with that desire we're yes. not wanting these things just because they're things. We're desiring them because we were created to desire. We were mm -hmm. created to want more, to build and to brand and to also to serve uh, from that same place of wanting more, wanting more with purpose mm -hmm. so that we can serve more and staying connected to other human beings because it's so important. God told men in the very beginning and it wasn't good for him to be alone. Right. He brought forth out of him wool man, man with a womb, the yeah. ability yeah. to bear more fruit, the ability yeah. to increase and multiply came through woman. Without the woman, man could have never produced anything. 
He could have never increased. He could have never multiplied. He could not have been fruitful on his own. So it is, and just as, just as woman, as she was created, became 50% of the population then, here we are today, look at the numbers. Exactly. Right? And to, to really think, when you really think about it, I mean, like we say it all the time and, and, and it's the truth, but I think to really wrap your mind around, I was just in Egypt and we were driving through this area. I had left the pyramids. I was just in awe just of the size and the magnitude. And so we're driving through this neighborhood and it just hit me that every person I saw came from a woman. Like every, I mean, you, when you think about that, like we say it, but when you stop and think there's seven point something billion people on the planet, every single one of them came through a woman. When you understand that, you start to grasp the magnitude and the significance of what women bring to the planet. Because right. without them, every single one of them will disappear. <laughs> They're yeah. not here. Yeah, yeah. Of the seven billion, half of those being, approximately half of those being women, and still the other half came from women. So there's no way to escape the value and the importance of women in the world and in the marketplace. So having that as our as our uh, power, if you mm -hmm. will, the numbers are there, the will is there, the desire is there, the passion is there. What we have lacked, what has not been there is feeling okay to be there, mm -hmm. feeling that we have the permission to be there, waiting on someone to validate us or to make us feel significant enough that we can own our own power. And you as a, a male part in this business marketplace, what are some of the things that you think need to take place for women to feel that they can own their power, that they can come forth because we can have this conversation all day, but until we can empower women enough to feel as if they deserve to be there, um, it's, you know, it's kind of spinning mm -hmm. the wheels. One of the things that I think uh, is the connection. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when I talk with women, uh, because I get a chance to travel a lot. And then like, for instance, when I was in just say Kenya, for instance, um, everybody knows about Nairobi and everybody knows about Mombasa. But yeah. then when you start going to Kisi or when you go to Bungoma or some of the other places that are outlying or the villages yeah. uh, it, and it's outlying, what you see is it's more compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. It's more separated. Yeah. And, and that separation is what disconnects the women over here to the women over there. Now, I've come to realize that separation is a an international problem or an international issue, but it's also a national issue. Yeah. So it's the ability to help women, first of all, feel more connected at their core, mm -hmm. connected to the women next to them, connected to the women in other countries, in other areas of different ethnicities is that connection that will help expand the value of them as a whole. Because like I said, what they're going to realize when they connect with women over there is they're equally as important. Yeah. See, um, one of the things I realized, you know, for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of speaking and presentations and they bring me into different groups or organizations and ask me to speak to men, the young men, women, and, you know, things like that. Well, one of the things I realized, especially in speaking, that it's hard for people to be what they can't see. Uh, uh, it's hard to be what you can't see. And so it's important for the women who are doing it to be role models and examples and inspiration and just the, the visualization of the possibility that it can be done. Sometimes giving back does not mean that you have to give money or that you have to give material things. Sometimes you just give your time to go and show and share and people are inspired by that. They're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, I could do that. <laughs> I, I, well, if she can do it, I can do it too. Right. And so just to have them doing things just like you're doing, putting on shows just like this, where you can bring on women who are doing entrepreneurship, getting their business out there, sharing ideas and philosophies and other women being able to see it thinking, I never thought about that. I never saw it this way. And so I think part of it is just the connectability of women locally and then establishing connectability globally. 
and having forums where they can come together and see new possibilities. Wow, you're speaking of the quilting circle. Mm. And I remember um, we, I've shared with women over the years and Sisters in the Walk, we have an organization there and also uh, empowerment clinics and women of destiny organizations that I founded and, and given birth to. And what we discovered over time is God was sharing this with me about how women stay connected when they didn't have the modern technology and the pieces and what they did you know, a hundred plus years ago or more is that women held these quilting circles. And I'm sure they still do in some other parts of the world, but in the West, we buy quilts. But <laughs> my great grandmother, grandmother, I remember them quilting. And as they would bring their fabric from each other, from clothing that they had worn out and they would bring their pieces together in one space and they would take turns owning the quilt. So what happened as I studied this and studied this is that each woman's pieces, piece of the quilt woven together, sewn together in that one quilt. So when that family got ready to relocate, say they went out west, they would carry that quilt with them. So in carrying that quilt, they were carrying part of the sisterhood. Mm. So when they wrapped their babies in that quilt. They were wrapping the sisterhood around that baby. When they wrapped themselves or someone sick in the family, they knew they had that person, that sisterhood with them. That, so what you're speaking to is the power of sisterhood and the connectedness that women have with each other in conversations and dialogue. And I so desire to see that come into fruition um, in, in my own community, in my global community, to see women really begin to bond together, you know, over that cup of coffee, if you will, virtual coffee, if it has to be, to just say, hey, sister, I'm here for you. Because it's a lonely thing to feel alone. Oh, yeah. And feel that nobody cares. And if you're not ex feel as though you're not accepted. So I just want all of the women who are listening today. And I have my brother, Dr. West here with me to just affirm you. You are OK. But what will make you even better and stronger is to be connected to mm -hmm. other women. And there are women who will love on you and will embrace your gifts and your talents and pour into you. So don't think that you have to live the rest of your life being a solo performer. Believe me, mm -hmm. I've been there, done that, and that does not feel good. We mm -hmm. need people. Back to you, Dr. West. You know, two things that you said. Number one, I think there's so many people that are used to being solo when what's needed now is a choir. Uh, we need the people to come together in that organization. And even when you talk about being lonely, um, it, we don't want people to mistake that concept or that term because being alone doesn't mean you're lonely, right? right? But, but being lonely doesn't mean you're alone. Mm -hmm. That you can be alone, a lo a lonely in a group of people. And so when we're talking about uh, alone, we're talking about the lack of connectivity. And that's what we want to bring to the table. And I, I think one of the things that was my goal with the International Business Connection Summit, because I took about 25 people from the United States that were entrepreneurs, yeah. business owners. They're there in that room, too. They're coming in and out and hosting breakout sessions. But what we were saying is, what is your business? What is it that you have? What is it that you want to do with your business? How do you want to grow it? How can we help? Uh, we met people, uh, ladies there that they said, no, we we grow the coffee. Like we we grow the coffee ourselves. We we have it, and we want to be able to to provide our coffee in the U.S. Who can we connect with that we know have coffee shops or tea shops that we can create partnerships to get the coffee and tea together? We know that's a start, putting the two people together, and then they can work out the details. And so, one of the things that I've made up in my mind to do, or purposed myself to do, is to always carry somebody's desire with me, so uh -huh. that when I go and I'm talking. Um, I could be the connection. Sometimes we're going to have to be the bridge, oh, right? Um, yeah. God puts all kinds of mandates on us. And yeah. sometimes that mandate is to be the bridge. The other thing is, I think we make a mistake when we don't realize that every person has a gift. Every person has a calling. Every, every. Yeah. 
And, and Dr. Fay, it, it pains me as I look throughout the world and I see how many lives have been taken innocently, mm -hmm. how many lives have been lost innocently for, mm -hmm. for the sake of minerals and diamonds and gold and just these different things. And mm -hmm. some of them were children. Yes. Right now, now we struggle a lot of times today. We struggle with different things. Mm -hmm. And I believe that part of the reasons that we are struggling is because we don't have the answer. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. But I don't think anyone has ever given consideration to God probably gave us the answer and we could have let that answer die. Mm -hmm. We could have not protected that answer. There was somebody that was supposed to bring us. Everybody had a gift. Everybody had a calling. Everybody had something they were supposed to bring to the earth. And when we allow people to be silenced, to be killed, to be set aside, we're allowing the answers to be set aside. And yeah. then we look around and say, well, why is this happening? And why is that happening? And, and let's pray and pray and pray. Well, he writes the ending before he wrote the beginning. Yes. So the answer was already there. But if we don't have a desire to... to to cultivate the gifts that's put in other people, understanding that they're for all of us, yes. then I think we miss out a lot. And, and that takes us back to the women. Yeah. They have a different idea when it comes to nurturing. They have a different idea when it comes to connecting. You just talked about the quilting circle. I, you brought up that term. And I remember um, when I was younger, my grandmother used to be a part of an organization at the church called the Sewing Circle. And mm -hmm. I never knew what that was. I never went. I never knew what it was. But now when you just said that, I thought, I wonder if that was the sewing circle. That, was good. <laughs> that they would get together. I know my grandmother uh, did yarn and quilt and all that stuff. And I wonder if that's what they went there to do. Yes. So women have unique ways to connect and bring their gifts together. And I think we have to pr pr we have to protect and appreciate every gift. And then not only protect and appreciate it, but see how we can help magnify it. Sometimes we're the connection or the bridge to who needs to bring their gift to the next group. Yeah, exactly. And wow, you said so much, so much there, because I wanted to bring out the fact that you have people who travel with you and you're pouring into people around the world and making these connections. You're not here to just say this is a good idea. You're actually living the good idea. And what you're saying is really the way that it really is and you're being authentic with us. And so that other lives are being impacted. I like the fact that you said you bring one piece, one part with you, bring that gift with you and being the bridge, being the bridge and knowing that we're all connected as human beings on this planet and that God wants to be God through us in our everyday waking, walking, talking lives. You may not have to travel to Kenya, darlings. You can go next door. Just be that in your family, be that in your neighborhood, be that in your church, because somebody needs your ear. Somebody needs you to the bridge. Somebody wants to share their gift with you. Years ago, I remember my grandmother was a cosmetic salesperson, and she always had this catalog. And, you know, that's how women stay, my aunt, rather, my aunt had that. And she, she, people stay connected with her because of that catalog. And she would ring the doorbell, knock on the door, and they knew that she was there to bring their delivery, and they expected her there. And, you know, don't allow what you've gone through to close doors on you mm -hmm. because that's so important right now. Dr. West, we have so many people who are suffering emotionally and mental uh, traumas behind what, whether it's COVID or pre-COVID that went into COVID and still with them, whatever it may be, but don't let your pain define you because you're bigger than that. You're greater than that. I can tell you news you can use. You're coming out of it because you've already come out of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, well, Dr. and there's nothing that they've ever faced in their life that they didn't make it through. That's one thing that drives me. No matter what I've ever faced in my life, no matter how bad it was, no matter how difficult it was, I had COVID. I was in the hospital in Nairobi, Kenya. The English wasn't their first language. I'm in the hospital. I didn't couldn't get in touch with my people. I didn't have internet. I didn't have the Wi-Fi. I didn't have the TV. I'm just in a room. Yeah. And uh, and and I still made it. You know what I'm saying? I still mean, there's nothing that we've ever faced that we didn't make it. That ought to be a driving factor right there. But what what I've 
found Dr. Fay is most people don't know what to do with that issue. Yeah. No, most people don't know what to do with that relationship that they made it through or that difficult time where they had to file bankruptcy or yeah. the time where they were homeless. They, they don't know what to do with that. And what I suggest that they, they, they do is that you have to find a way to turn your wounds into workshops. Because there's somebody who is going through it right now, right? And that is a revenue source. That, they're going through it right now. And, and you can take what you went through and, and you can teach them how you overcame. I believe that life is the best teacher. Yeah. That we, you know, we teach what we know and, and what we've lived through. And that, that gives us an authenticity because we've actually overcome it. And here's what I realized, Dr. Faye. Yes. They can never be me. Yeah. I can never be you, but yeah. I can use the tools that you developed while you were going through certain situations to help me get through it. So I'm yeah. never trying to get them to be me. I'm trying to get them to be able to use the tools that I used. Yeah. And so when you realize that um, that what you've gone through can be the key to help other people make it through, then it gives it a meaning. Yeah. V yeah. Victor Frankel in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, uh, he said, uh, he, they asked him, how did people survive the unspeakable cruelties of Nazism? He was in Nazi Germany. He said three things. He said, number one, their belief in God. Number two, they had a loved one that they were destined and determined to see. And number three, they were dedicated to a cause greater than themselves. Yeah. So when you sit there and say, oh, me, why me? And this is for me. No, that that's that's the collapse. That, that's where it's hard to make it through. But when you say, wait a minute, this is not just for me to get through. This is for me to help other people get through that. Yeah. They tie themselves to a cause greater than themselves and you draw energy from that cause. And so I want to encourage everyone out there um, that you're not the only one going through, but you can feel like the only one if you're doing it by yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, your your story is your glory. I love that, Dr. West, you said turn your wounds into your workshop yeah. and know that your pain, your testimony, your story is writing. I'm telling you, is writing your path. It is letting you know the path that God has called you to. I remember hearing something from, I believe it was Dr. Mike Murdoch. He wrote so many books on wisdom from scripture. And I remember he said, whatever disturbs you the most is the thing that you have been called to change. Mm. And so when you start thinking about all of, of the things that you have gone through, we're not discounting that those things were painful. We're not minimizing the damage that we think emotionally and psychologically that may have been done. But what we're saying to you is that you don't have to live in that space anymore. Mm. That's your story. Now, the moment, what I've discovered, Dr. West, is that the moment we begin to tell the story, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. The moment mm -hmm. we begin to share it, it ignites a fire on the inside of us mm -hmm. that no one can extinguish. Mm -hmm. So while you're thinking that you don't qualify and you're not good enough, you not worthy, open your mouth and begin to share your story. Mm -hmm. And maybe everybody won't hear it, but I'm telling you, somebody will. Mm -hmm. And I'm going this, that I'm not everybody's cup of coffee, but I'm somebody's Starbucks. Mm -hmm. so, continue to share it other people will start it will start resonating with them like wait a minute i've been through it and everybody dr west can turn on the camera they may not want to and to turn on the camera and get in front of that camera do lives or streams or reels or shorts and start telling your story mm -hmm. building your channel mm -hmm. do something i push i feel like i'm pushing the baby out today do something you have to do something. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Most of the time, first of all, we uh, we have to understand that we're connected in the human race. We're connected. Um, yeah. I don't have to know you yeah. to watch you get your hand slammed in the door and we both go, ah, mm -hmm. it didn't hurt me. Yeah. But just me seeing it, I was connected. I'm connected. I'm like, oh, I felt it. You understand? Uh, Dr. Faye, and for those of you who don't know, I worked in surgery for 29 years. I assisted in every surgical specialty, heart surgery, general, GYN, robotic, orthopedic, neurosurgery, every. Mm -hmm. And one of the most intriguing surgeries that I would get to participate in was organ transplants. Mm -hmm. Organ transplants were unique because 
sometimes what they would do is they'd say, this person is on dialysis, but they need a kidney. And this person has two and they're willing to share one. Mm -hmm. and, and they did the donor matching and everything. And so what they would do is they would take the kidney out of this person and put it in the next person. And, and now after some treatment and recovery, this person could live a natural and normal life. Mm -hmm. and, and then it hit me that sometimes someone else's freedom mm -hmm. is currently located within us mm -hmm. because it's not just the physical transplant that'll free somebody it's yeah. the mental and the spiritual transplant when you get to talk about that issue when you get to talk about what you've been through when you get to talk about that setback how you were held down how you were knocked back knocked down you're transferring that mindset that ideology that belief from you to someone else and it is the freeing factor that allows them to live their life on the next level now watch this dr Faye. sometimes they go through all the matching all of the donor matching and the tissue sampling and they do the transplant but watch this even though they did all the matching the person's body starts to reject the organ why? Because they say, wait a minute, this ain't me. And see, your, your, your immune system is designed to attack anything foreign. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, this is not me. So it attacks it. So they have to be treated to allow it to absorb that new organ. Mm -hmm. Mentally, we have to do the same thing sometimes. Sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. How many of us get up to change our life? I'm, I'm going to start working out. And we buy the new clothes and the new outfits and the new tennis shoes and gym clothes. And for three or four days, you, we can't be stopped. Right. About day five, three, four, I don't know about it, right? Right, because we treat we we treated everything but the mindset of this is who I am. Because we're like, well, wait a minute, that's not me. Wait a minute, I don't deserve this. Wait a minute, I don't deserve that blessing. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be global. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to share my idea with people in the other side of the world. Wait a minute, my business can't change lives around the world. It's not true. It's what we believe and we haven't been treated mentally to understand that, yes, it was you. Yeah. No, you. Yeah, you, you were called. Yeah. Your idea. The idea was given to you to create this change. And a lot of times we're holding it for ourselves. Yeah. And while others who we've been called to serve are stuck. Stuck. Yeah. They're stuck. They're waiting on us to take the stage. They're waiting on us to speak out. They're waiting on us to make that move to create that program, that product, that service. They're waiting on it. They're waiting on you, my friends. So what are you going to do? The world is waiting on your arrival. You have been called to serve. Don't allow what you've been through to keep you from living the life you were sent here to do. The two numbers between the date of your birth and the date of your passing are important for this reason and this reason alone. It's what you do between the numbers that matters. Mm -hmm. It's between the numbers. It's between the numbers, brother. Dr. Faye, listen, I was listening uh, to an actor, I think it was Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. and he was, he was giving accolades, I think, to Sidney Poitier. And he was saying, if he hadn't laid this foundation, if he hadn't come, if he hadn't done this, it opened the doors for all of us other actors. You know, we get that. And then I heard musicians talking about musicians that came before them and all this stuff. And uh, and it makes sense. Yeah. I just want to say this to somebody, and, and it's, a, it's tricky, and sometimes it's, it's difficult to hear. But <laughs> most of us, I was speaking in Kenya and I said something. And what I said was that most of us see us as the blessing. In other words, we see us as the person that's going to receive all of these things, that we're going to get this and God's going to open all these doors. Um, but somebody has to lay the foundation. Yeah. So, see, what if God is just establishing the generational blessings on you? What if what if you're just to lay the foundation? What if you're just to open the door? What if you're just the person to speak up? But because you spoke up and spoke out, somebody said, wait a minute, 
I'm going to pattern my life after them. I'm going to pattern my life after her. I'm going to be bold like she was. You, you see, like somebody has to be the foundation. And and a lot of times we think if we're not in the spotlight, then, and then it's not our time to shine. Nonsense. Not true. Uh, Dr. King wasn't always a hero. I just had to tell somebody that. Yeah. I said, you, you got to know Dr. King is a hero now. But he wasn't a hero back when he was doing the marching and all that stuff. That wasn't the case. Muhammad Ali was not a hero then. He was a villain then. Nelson Mandela was not a hero when he was in prison. Mahatma Gandhi was not a hero when he was doing the hunger strikes. But history has a way of viewing things. Life has to be lived forward and understood backwards. And when we go back and understand, we say, wait a minute, he was a hero. Jesus wasn't a hero when he was walking around the whole time. The Sadducees and the Pharisees say, hey, wait a minute, we've got to put this man to death. And they did that. But after that, we look back and say, wait a minute, he did something. He he sacrificed something. And we see history differently. And all I'm saying to someone listening right now is maybe you'll never get the million dollars. Maybe your name will never be up in the spotlight. Maybe it never will. But maybe some young girl will say, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Dr. Faye Wilson had this show and I was watching some old episodes of her show. Mm -hmm. And if she can do a show, I can do a show. Yes. She said that I have to step out there. And so all I'm telling someone is that that you're still valuable, even if you're the foundation. Mm -hmm. you're, you're still the foundation. And so I, I encourage you to step out there. Don't worry about if it makes a major splash. It doesn't matter. What matters is you stepped out there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah you, you stepped out there. Yeah. Let it be a splash to you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the other thing, Dr. Faye, is I was literally out in the yard raking leaves. I know this stuff is crazy. But I was out in the yard waking, raking leaves, and, and I just have learned to see God in everything. I just learned that God is in everything if we look for him. Yeah. And, and, and all of a sudden, it just, it just really hit me that trees release dead leaves automatically. Mm -hmm. like you don't have to do anything. They just let them go. They're no longer valuable. They're no longer needed. And I'm going to I'm just let it go. And, and, and if we can learn that from a tree, that there's certain situations and certain experiences and certain things in our past that are just dead, but yet we're holding on to them. We're nurturing them. We're carrying them with, with us. And all we have to do is say, I'm going to release you. Yeah. You're no longer serving me. You're no longer a value to me and have to let it go. And then I, I, I would just out there just raking these leaves and I realized apple trees don't eat apples. Yeah. Right. And the fruit it bears is for someone else. And they never get more fruit until they release the apples that they have. Yeah. So I think we learn a lot from from nature, just from looking how the way God created things to work and yeah. pattern our pattern our lives after that same thing. Yeah. Self pruning. <laughs> self pruning is part of the process. You got to mm -hmm. get the old for the new to come forward. Mm -hmm. And like and ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get rid of the old so that the new can come forth because God is calling you and has called you forth. We need those treasures that are hidden inside of your earthen vessel to mm -hmm. manifest on the stages of the world, whether that be a physical stage or a podcast stage or being an author, whatever that is for you. Maybe you're called to lead a women's circle, a women's group. Maybe that's your calling. Whatever it is, don't hesitate. Don't wait because we need all hands on deck right now. Amen. Right now. Dr. West, Forbes says that uh, there's a lot of conversation. I was reading an article in Forbes in, in September a lot of conversations about we've come a long ways with women. We've come a long way with races. But yet when we look at the numbers, if we looked at them, sometimes it's not good to look at those. But it said only 8% of the CEOs are women. And I'm thinking, but I know women who have that are movers and shakers and are able to do so much. And my, I ask myself the question, why? And then I realized it's about this conversation we're having right now. They don't feel worthy, don't feel qualified. And I know, ladies, ladies, after listening to Dr. West today, you got to feel a bit more qualified right now than you did before we began to have this conversation. 
Dr. West, fill us in on how people get connected to you to be a part of your movement, if you will, to, to just shift the trajectory in the business arena around the world. Fantastic. I think the easiest way to reach out to me is on social media. And I, I do that because I travel so much. You know, you can reach me on my website. My email is right down below. You can always reach me on my email, but uh, even on um, Facebook or uh, Messenger, if you just reach out there. And, and I say that because it's easy for me to reach those things with regardless of what country I'm in. I can just log on. The message is right there. I don't have to sign into anything different. Sometimes when I go into other countries, it'll sign me out of my emails. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times I don't know the password. <laughs> I just, you know, it was just, I've had it for so long. It just comes up automatically. When I get signed up, I'm like, what is that? And I got to go through a lot to get back in. And so uh, I, I think if they reach out to me on any of those ones that are posted on the screen, I'd love to hear from them. And I'd love to connect and see how we can make a difference together. Amen. Staying connected, which is so powerful. I've so enjoyed this conversation, Dr. West, but I do want to give you space to just pour into the audience again, just recap or just in whatever you feel would be a blessing to them right now. Mm. Yeah. Well, one thing you just said uh, was about the CEOs and, and that there's a lack of representation at the top when it comes to women. And I, you know, I learned a lot of lessons from my mother and my grandmother. Uh, they're my heroes, both, both of my grandmothers and my, my mother. And I just watched them. And um, I was just telling somebody, I remember uh, Thanksgiving is coming up and it's one of our biggest holidays for our family. Our family back in my mom's side is so big that we always had to have Thanksgiving at the church, like in the church hall, because my grandmother would invite everybody. I mean, if you didn't have a place to go, you're coming to our Thanksgiving. And there was always plenty of food, plenty of things to eat. I was at my mother's house one day and, and we were fixing food and and I was helping to set the table and and um you know we this is the way we did it we had the the grown ups table and then the kind of the teen table and the little kids table mm -hmm. and the progression was you just wanted to to have a chance to sit at the grown folks table you wanted to be at the big people's table sooner or later and I remember when I finally made that transition that they felt like I had something to add and I could sit at the table but Dr. Fay, what was interesting is no matter what we were doing, I would we would put the food down, we'd set everything down. And, and what people would do is they would mark their spot. I'm sitting here and I'm sitting here and I'm sitting here and nobody take my seat. And I just drank out of this cup, so this is mine. They would just do whatever they could to mark their spot. But you know, Dr. Fay, my mother was never moved. Mm -hmm. my, my mother was never moved. She never tried to mark a spot. She never tried to say anything. She never tried to do anything. She just served. She just gave. She just brought the food in, put this on the table, put get these serving spoons, put that in the, the gravy, put this in there, right? And then we all gather around. And then my, watch this. My mother would walk in and she'd just go to her spot. <laughs> she, she never had to fight for it. And, and I, I learned something and I think we can all learn from, from this. And that is when you prepare the table, you always have a seat. Woo! When you, when you prepare the table. So she wasn't worried about who was sitting where or who was calling what or who got next or who drank out of what cup. They all knew that she prepared the table. She's got to have a seat. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I think what I would like to see women do today is yeah they may be blocking you out of the the boardroom right now and, and you're trying to get into their table but i can promise you that collectively the women you can prepare your own table you can come together with ideologies and philosophies and technologies that can help you have your own table and now watch this they're trying to drink out of a cup and they're trying to mark the seat and they're trying to put their jacket over the chair so that they can get a seat but you will never have to because you prepared the table and that's what I would encourage you to do today and realize that you've been given some things and by yourself is nothing. One of the things I learned from my mom, everybody would bring something. Everybody would bring something, but she would coordinate it. And you bring in this cake and you bring in this. Everybody would bring something. And so she never tried to be the only person preparing. Mm -hmm. She knew that everybody had a gift. She had, nobody made sweet potato pie like my grandmother, my aunt, and it, it's, out. it's out. I love you all, but it's not that. You understand? Mm -hmm. And... and everybody has a gift so yeah. that when you prepare that table you're not preparing it for yourself 
you're mm -hmm. preparing it with other people in mind so that everybody can bring their gift. And I think as we start to realize that we can prepare our own tables with the gifts, skills, talents, and abilities from people that we know and are, inter and are introduced to, it creates a whole new opportunity that we didn't even know was there. It introduces us to new people. It helps elevates us in new ways. We get to leverage off the talents and skills and gifts that other people have combined with ours and take it to the next level. And so I would say to the women listening, don't beg for a seat at their table. <laughs> get together with your girls and create your home, right? Because after a while, they have to look at you. Yeah. Right? Like when you become great, they have to notice you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. And being a Southern girl, I'm telling you, I know about that family table. Mm -hmm. And mom always has a seat. Always. Never. Everybody knew where that seat was. Right. right. Yeah, <laughs> you just didn't have to mark it. It was there. It was hers. Have to mark it. Didn't yeah. have to mark it. That is so powerful. Dr. West, thank you so much. This has been such a joy, such a privilege to be able to share this space with you again. I'm so glad that I have my own table. Hey, go on, somebody. I'm glad you let me sit at it. <laughs> what a joy, what a privilege. And I so look forward to continuing to build and to grow with you as you, you travel and you and I connect and continue to do what God has called us to do and pour okay. to as many people as we can, as fast as we can okay. around this world. Thank you, Thank sir, you. for being here. God bless you. And you. I'll see you a moment in the green room. God bless Thank you. you. Folks, I know you enjoyed this as much as I did. And I would love hearing from you. All you have to do is check out the information on the screen or in the uh, outro here in a moment. Thank you for being a part of the conversation today. Continue to share it with your friends if you've watched us since your social media. And if you're watching us on television right here on CWTVN, please make sure to let somebody know to tune in to Curves. I love you. God bless you. And until next time, remember, the calling is a gift, but the choice is yours. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. The woman's global influence has yet to be realized. Curves offer Christian women entrepreneurs the opportunity to share their mission-driven and heart-centered businesses while staying true to their calling. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, contact us today at coach at drfay.com. That's coach at drfay.com. Thank you for watching today's show. All of our programs are designed to help you create the life you were born to live from the inside out. The show you have just seen is an example of the quality and standard of care we here at CWTVN put into creating a media atmosphere that transcends boundaries and ignites transformation. We would love hearing from you. Contact us at 1-877-870-7579 or email at host at CWTVN. All donations can be sent using Cash App at Dr. Fay TV, PayPal at PayPal at DrFay.com, or mail to P.O. Box 251, Stuttgart, Arkansas, 72160.